Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I'd like to give you a quick walkthrough of a really great case SQL demo. Now, some background. When the Kafka Streams API was new, we wrote a demo application that illustrated how to build a streaming application. And it was a streaming music service that continuously computed in real time the latest music charts from a stream of music play events. It would do things like the top five songs per music genre, the top five overall, and things like that. It's still around and a very good example of how to use the Streams API. Well, it should come as no surprise to you that we rewrote that application in KSQL. Now you've got a working project you can use to see how to do things like this in KSQL and even compare that code to the Streams version if you want to see the comparison and the contrast. Stream processing is new to a lot of us, and doing stream processing with a SQL-like language is even newer, so these things are helpful. Now, the rest of this demo is going to walk you through the KSQL music project bit by bit. Uh, if you prefer one command that runs this whole demo end-to-end -end so you can see the results, just run the start script provided in the Quick Start Demos repo in the GitHub link provided here. Now, to do this, we're going to need a Kafka cluster, a KSQL server, and the Confluent schema registry. Now, thanks to the Confluent CLI for making it super easy to bring up all of those services just on your laptop for development and testing purposes. Confluent CLI is for development only, but super handy for things like this. Now, after that, run the data generator. This is going to create two sources for the application's input data, both of which are in Avro format. One is a stream of play events. Uh, think uh, song X was played at such and such a time. And then a stream of song metadata. For example, a song called Don't Stand So Close to Me was written by a guy named Gordon or something like that. Then start the KSQL client. Now, as is often the case in demos like this, we want to start processing at the beginning of the data in each topic. This applies to any new KSQL statement we issue. For any new statement, it needs to know whether it should start processing messages from the earliest part of the topic's history or the most recent. And in production, you usually want most recent, but for demos like this, we're going to tell it earliest. It's just a little easier to look at the results that way. Now, let's explore our topic data. We have one Kafka topic called play events, which captures those play events. That's each time a song gets played. Uh, there are a lot of events there, and they'll just keep coming until we type Control C. And that'll stop printing the data from the topic. So let's start actually working with that data. I'm going to use this topic first because the data is pretty straightforward and easy to understand. We need to tell KSQL that this topic is actually a KSQL stream and not just a raw Kafka topic. We're going to point KSQL to the underlying Kafka topic called play events, and we specify that it's Avro data. Now we've got a KSQL stream called KSQL underscore play events. That's an unbounded sequence of events. If we were to select from that, we would see results pour in uh, forever until you know, the music stopped playing. By the way, all the stream, table, and query names I'm going to use here, they're all preceded with KSQL underscore. Now, that's not required by anything other than our own predilections in writing the demo. Uh, we did it that way so that you can run the KSQL queries alongside the Kafka Streams API version of this music demo and not run into any naming conflicts. I mean, you can name these things anything you want. Then we describe it to see the fields associated with this topic. Notice song ID and another field called duration. If you wanted to do some basic filtering, say let's to qualify songs that were played for at least 30 seconds, you can do that using the WHERE clause. Now if we control C this, the query again stops. We actually want it to keep running. I, I want a version of that query that runs forever. So let's create a persistent query that runs 24-7 until we stop it. The create stream part that I'm typing here tells KSQL to create a persistent running stream processing program based on everything that comes after the as keyword. This query runs until you stop it with another command or just shut down the KSQL engine altogether. Now let's look at the Kafka topic called song feed that represents a database of songs. That, again, will just keep going until you hit control C or we run out of songs. We want to view this data not really as a stream, but as a table keyed on song ID. 
That table you're going to think of is like a collection of key value pairs where the key is song ID and the value is some description of the song. But as it happens, the original Kafka topic has no key. Uh, that is, the key of each Kafka message in that topic is null, which is no fun at all. So to make a k-sql table, we need the topic to have a non-null key in order for things like joins and aggregations to have any hope of being able to work. Now, happily, we can fix this in k-sql itself. And honestly, this is a common problem. You frequently can get things coming in that have a null key. So we need a way to address this. First, we're going to create a stream from this Kafka topic, just like we did before. That's a k-sql stream now. Now, let's look at a few records in this stream and notice that row key is blank. And that's what I said before, that, that that key is null. When we describe it to see the fields associated with this topic, notice that id is an integer. So, so far we have a stream, but there are two problems. One is that there's no key, and two is that the id field that we would want to be the key is an integer. In the current release of ksql, a table is required to have a key, and it is required to be of type string. We can address both of these issues with one ksql command. So the command you see here coerces the id to be a string using that cast scalar function, and then assigns the id as the key of the stream using the partition by clause. It's really pretty readable if you've ever seen SQL before. Now that we've got our stream cleaned up a bit, we can make it into a table with that id field as the table's key. It's a string now. And this table really is like a materialized view of the events in that stream or the messages in that topic with only the latest value of each event for each key. So cool, this is a pretty good milestone. We've already derived some useful streams and tables from our original Kafka topic. Uh, let's just remind ourselves here. But we can do much more. Let's join the stream of play events to a song table. We're going to do a stream table join using the left join syntax that you see. And so we can see not only when a particular song is played, but also get descriptive information about that song. Like, oh, I don't know, the song title would be nice, right? And that comes along with each play event as the output of the join. And I snuck something else in here on you, that one as key call, it's kind of like this constant value there. Uh, that creates a new field called key call where every row gets a value of one. Now just tuck that away for a minute and I'll explain why we did that in a little bit. So now we want to see the top music for all time, the top, say, five songs. That's which songs got the most play in the entire network. We can use the count function on the stream ksql song plays that we just created above. And while all time greatest hits are cool, we also might not mind knowing, say, the stats in the last 30 seconds. This query here looks very familiar, but now note the window clause. Uh, that gives us counts of play events for all songs in 30 second intervals. And if you look at the outputs of one of these queries, you'll notice it gets updated as every new play event comes in. It's not like it waits for the window to expire. Now, a note. In the world of streaming, uh, the idea of a count being final when the window closes is a little touchy because some input data might arrive late or out of order. That's possible, and ksql deals with that. So if data does arrive late, then the window aggregations that have closed for that late arriving data, uh, that will be updated. That window will be updated with those results being now the new final ones. You can observe these dates by querying on the row time column, like I'm showing you here. Now, uh, that's counts, but let's get back to this idea of the top five song counts. Uh, for that, we could use the ksql function top k. Now, here the demo differs a little bit from the streams API version a little bit, at least in this version I'm showing you here. At the time of this recording, the streams API has a method for generating the top five song names and play counts whereas the ksql top k function will just show you the counts and not the names associated with each one. But you know, we'll assume that that's exactly what we need for today. Uh, and this top k is an aggregate function that runs on a stream, a stream only. So we'll have to convert this table that we have back to a stream like this. Now, if the topic underlying this stream has multiple partitions, then of course the stream has multiple partitions and the aggregation we want to do on it we want that to be on a global basis. We don't want that on a partition basis, but we want the top five songs, period. To make this work, we now have to repartition the stream into a single partition using 
that key call field that we put in earlier. Yeah, we tucked that away. I said we were gonna come back to it and, and here it is. Now we can get the top five counts on that stream grouping by key call. If we didn't have key call, we'd be getting the top five counts per partition, but not globally. And when it comes to the business question we're trying to answer, global is what we want. So we had to do that repartition. Or you might want to do this by genre, in which case you would group that way too. It just depends on the requirement you're trying to satisfy. Now, it might seem like a natural question to ask if you can get names along with the counts. And the answer to that is yes, but not yet. Stay tuned for a new release of KSQL and an updated version of this tutorial for the details on that. That's the great thing about KSQL. It is, as you can see, already a really powerful and easy to use language for performing stream processing. And it's still adding features, new, exciting, cool features with every release. So there's a lot you can do now and lots of things to look forward to. Get started checking out the demo and let us know what you build yourself.